Psalms 31 verses 19 to 20 Oh, how abundant is your goodness which you have stored up for those who fear you and work for those who take refuge in you in the sight of the children of mankind. In the cover of your presence, you hide them from the plots of men. You store them in your shelter from the strife of tongues. King David declared a very powerful testimony here wherein he declared his experience when uh, he was running away from Saul and he finally experienced the goodness of God. And he is testifying here that God is store his goodness to those who fear him, who take refuge in him. So brothers and sisters, if you are uh, experiencing some troubles today, rest assured that God has instored goodness for you to be displayed in the sight of man. Pag nakita yun ng mga tao na ibibigay sa'yo ni Lord yung mga blessings na prinepare niya, of course, there will be some uh, evil intents or there will be some accusations from the evil one. But He also promised here protection from those people who wants to accuse you and destroy your credibility because God will continually protect you from the evil intent of man. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you for your promise that you have stored abundant goodness for those people who fear you, for those people who trust in you. Lord, may we continue to receive that encouragement that you are the God who have plenty, you have abundant goodness that you have prepared for all your people. And especially, thank you God for that promised protection that you will give to us no matter what accusation, no matter what evil intent that people have for us. Lord, you will hide us in your presence always as you promise. We thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Happy Sunday, everyone. We want to thank you for being with us again here at our online worship service at Victory Christian Fellowship to Gigarao. Two things that we are passionate to do as a church, and that is to honor God and make disciples. Our on-site worship services 
has started last Sunday and uh, presently uh, our brothers and sisters are there today for our 10 a.m. and 4 p.m. worship services. But of course, we will continue to uh, have this online worship services for you, for those unvaccinated, for our children, and for those who are not yet qualified to go out because uh, we still have some restrictions from our government. But again, we will continue to air our online worship services at the uh, Facebook page, at our YouTube channel, and at RBC Cable Master. And this Sunday, we are going to start our new series entitled, Stable and Secure. This is a two-Sunday discussion on the different parables of the Lord Jesus Christ. And this Sunday, we'll be talking about Jesus as our cornerstone. And to preach to us the word, let's all welcome our campus director, one of my favorite preachers in the church, Miss Janina Tungpalan Karang. A blessed Sunday to everyone. Marami pong salamat at kasama na naman po namin kayo sa ating Sunday online worship service. Well, two more days or just one day na lang tapos na naman ang February. Grabe, ang bilis talaga ng panahon. Kamusta nga ba yung naging February mo? Was it filled with love? Next naman. We hope that you were really inspired to receive love from the Lord. And not just to receive but also to give this kind of love that you have received from the Lord to other people. Now, sabi nga po ni Pastor Joe, we are starting a brand new series today entitled Stable and Sure. This is gonna be for four weeks, but itong series natin ay hahatiin natin into two. The first two weeks will be uh, this uh, Feb ngayong Sunday at saka next Sunday, and then yung continuation itong series natin ay by July. So, pag sinabi natin stable, it means it is firmly established, it is fixed, it is steadfast, it is unchanging. Pag sinabi naman natin sure, it is marked or uh, given to feelings of confident certainty. It's also characterized by a lack of wavering or hesitation. Kumbaga daw, pagdating sa love life, pag sinabi mong stable, ito yung mga hinahanap ng mga young professionals, sa mga single women, dun sa future na mapapangasawa nila at saka manliligaw nila. Diba? Tama, diba, Jen? Ayan, so, uh, kumbaga, ito, pag sinabi mong stable, kailangan meron siyang stable job na kaya talaga siyang panindigan, kayang buhayin yung future family nila. Kapag sinabi mo namang sure, Ibig sabihin, dapat siguradong sigurado dun sa feelings niya para dun sa nililigawan niya. Hindi pwede na pabago-bago ang isip, hindi pwede na, alam mo yun, bigla na lang um, atras or baka maging biktima ka pa ng ghosting, ba? So pag sinabi natin, sure, it has to be, kung baka sa Tagalog, siguradong sigurado. Now, in a world where it is filled with uncertainties, Ang daming transitions, ang daming changes. Grabe, February pa nga lang, di ba? Ang dami nang nangyari this 2022. The question is, how can we live a stable and sure life? Is it really possible? And I want to ask you this, even as we are talking about stability and being sure. How stable and sure is your life now? Kamusta ka nga ba, kapatid? Kamusta ka nga ba, kaibigan? Have you found yourself near that breaking point already? Or siguro, iniisip mo na, okay pa naman ako, kaya ko pa naman. Pero pag nadagdagan pa ng isa pang weight, isa pang burden, isa pang pagsubok, sigurado ako, bibitiw, bibitiw na ako or magkokolaps na ako. And for some of us, we are thinking that, we are thinking, if only I am stable and sure, no matter how many trials, how many burdens and challenges that we might, we are facing, we will be able to move forward and respond in the right way. 
Now, how do we get out of it? How do we overcome? If we are almost near that stage of being burned out, ang daming ganap sa family, ang daming ganap sa work, ang daming ganap sa personal life mo, perhaps sa mga estudyante, di ba yung talagang punong-puno ang schedule mo araw-araw. Wala ka ng oras matulog, kakaaral, kakagawa ng research. Ang daming ganap sa life mo, there is inner turmoil, disillusionment, frustration, disappointment. Well, I want to tell you today that this message is for you. At huwag ka munang mag-tune out. It is our prayer that as we go through this preaching today, you will receive enlightenment and you will be spurred up to keep on moving forward no matter what happens. The goal of our series is to, rem to remind all of us today that our lives must be founded on Jesus Christ Himself, who is the chief cornerstone. And as the chief cornerstone, we must be able to align everything in our lives, everything that we do to Christ so that we will ensure a life that is stable and sure. Now, uh, I want to invite everyone to open your Bibles. We're going to read our scripture for today. It's taken from Mark chapter 12, verses 1 to 11. Please do read this with me. It says here, And he began to speak to them in parables, talking about Jesus. A man planted a vineyard and put a fence around it and dug a pit for the winepress and built a tower and leased it to tenants and went into another country. When the season came, he sent a servant to the tenants to get from them some of the fruit of the vineyard. And they took him and beat him and sent him away empty-handed. Again, he sent to them another servant, and they struck him on the head and treated him shamefully. And he sent another, and him they killed, and also with many others. Some they beat, some they killed. He had still one other, a beloved son. Finally, he sent him to them, saying, They will respect my son. But those tenants said to one another, This is the heir. Come, let us kill him and the inheritance will be ours. And they took him and killed him and threw him out of the vineyard. What will the owner of the vineyard do? He will come and destroy the tenants and give the vineyard to others. Have you not read the scripture? The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. This was the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. Let's just pray. Lord, we thank you, God, for today. Bless the preaching of your word. I pray, Holy Spirit, that you would speak to us today. Open our hearts and our minds. Enable us to grasp the truth of your word today. Thank you so much, Lord Jesus, that you are the chief cornerstone of our life. No matter what happens, we know that we will never be shaken. Lord, we bless you. We honor you today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Now, dun sa binasa natin kanina, Doon sa parable na binigay ni Jesus, uh, the owner is actually God. Tapos yung vineyard naman is the nation of Israel. While the tenant farmers are the are Israelites religious leaders. Yung servants naman na pinapadala, diba, to check, to collect sana yung uh, harvest, are the prophets and priests who are sent to the nation of Israel. And yung son dun sa parable, that was Jesus. You know, by telling this parable, Jesus was actually exposing the religious lead leader's plot to kill him and warned that their sins will be punished. So what Jesus quoted in Mark chapter 12, which we have read, can also be found actually in the book of Psalms, which we have read yung kinote ni Jesus from verses 10 to 11. That is taken from the book of Psalms. Now, I'm going to talk to you about, uh, we're going to divide this preaching into three. So, unang-una, we're going to talk about the Old Testament cornerstone. So, sa Psalms 118, verses 21 to 24, it says here, I thank you that you have answered me and have become my salvation. The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. 
This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Now, dito sa book of Psalms, the stone that the builders rejected is referring to the nation of Israel, which has become the cornerstone. So, ang sinasabi niya dito, even though all the other nations rejected Israel, God chose Israel and He chose to make Israel very prominent. In fact, sabi nga niya dito, God has, make it, has made Israel into a cornerstone. Kaya sabi niya dun sa verse 23, this is the Lord's doing. Ito, this is all the work of God. And sabi nila sa verse 24, this is the day that the Lord has made. So we always actually quote this verse. Diba? Meron pa nga tayong kanta out of this. Now, this is the day that the Lord has made that I will rejoice and be glad in it. So, kinakanta natin yan, lalo na yung mga, ano, yung mga sinaunang mga Christians, mga kapanuhunan siguro ni Pastor Joe, mga kapanuhunan ni Ato Erna, ayan. So, ako kasi mga nadatnan ko na lang yung mga pang, ano eh, uh, planet shakers, ganun lang talaga. <laughs> De, joke lang. But anyway, so, ang sinasabi dito sa Book of Psalms is that, Israel cannot possibly change themselves. They cannot change who they are. They cannot make themselves into a great nation. It is only God who can do that. And God's acceptance, God's deliverance, God's salvation actually made the nation of Israel, Israel known to all the world. Grabe no? And because of this, the Lord has redeemed Israel. The Lord has chosen Israel as his own nation, dahil dito, sabi niya, this is a day of great rejoicing. Now, in the New Testament, Jesus also depicts himself as the cornerstone. In fact, Jesus was foretelling what was about to come. When he gave this parable to the religious leaders, uh, this was already a few days before he was about to be crucified. So, Number one, the Old Testament cornerstone, this refers to the nation of Israel, whom God has exalted to all the nations. Now, number two is the New Testament cornerstone. Pag sinabi natin cornerstone, ibig sabihin, this is, I'm showing you a picture of a cornerstone, no? A cornerstone is the first stone that is laid. Kumbaga, sa building construction, this is the most important stone. This is a very large, reliable, sturdy stone because it has to carry the weight of every stone that will be laid upon it. And this cornerstone also joins all of the stones together. So, yung picture ng cornerstone, ganyan daw ang itsura niya. So, if you are building a building, the first stone that you will lay on top of the foundation would be the cornerstone. And the rest of the foundation for the building must be aligned with the cornerstone. Kumbaga, ang cornerstone, ito daw ang magiging basis, reference, guide in constructing the foundation. Ito ang unang gagawin to set the construction work. So, um, I'm not an engineer by profession. I had to ask Trisha Brebonaria about this. So, thank you so much, Trisha, for explaining this to me. So, ang ibig lang sabihin nito, ang cornerstone is very important in construction, in building. So, itong cornerstone na to, it has to be perfectly cut. It has to be strong as well. Kasi nga, kailangan maayos yung pagkakalagay mo. Kailangan maayos din yung magiging form niya kasi doon na lahat idudugtong sa kanya yung iba-ibang mga uh, stones. So, ibig sabihin, kung hindi maayos ang cornerstone, then eventually, uh, hindi magiging maganda yung foundation and the whole building itself. And when we talk about cornerstone, Jesus is using the same analogy to himself. That he is the cornerstone. He is the stone who will be rejected by the people. But, you know what? God will make him into a cornerstone and that God will exalt him in the eyes of his people. Jesus' rejection was planned by God from the very beginning. 
God allowed Jesus' rejection to happen in order to carry out His very own marvelous purposes. So, number three, Jesus as the cornerstone. Ayan. So, sabi ko kanina, the Old Testament cornerstone refers to the nation of Israel. The New Testament cornerstone is Jesus Himself. So, number three, anong implication? What does this mean to us? That Jesus is our cornerstone. You know, a few books after the book of Mark, the Apostle Paul confirmed it this way. In Ephesians chapter 2, verses 19 to 20, it says here, So then you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God, built on the foundation of the apostles and the prophets, Christ Jesus himself being the cornerstone. So ang sinasabi niya dito, Paul was saying that the church has been built up to represent God in the world with Jesus himself as the chief cornerstone. So knowing that Jesus is the cornerstone of our life, the question is, how will you respond to him? Will you accept him or will you also reject him? In the Old Testament, Israel was rejected by other nations, but God saved them and chose them to be the cornerstone, making them prominent among the nations or making them known to all the nations. In the New Testament naman, Jesus was rejected by the people, but God chose him to be the cornerstone who would bring salvation to the world. Now the question is, is your life built on Jesus, the chief cornerstone? Have you received the salvation that only Jesus can give? Is Jesus the most important one in your life? Does He reign supreme? Kung, baga, kung paano ka namumuhay ngayon, is it built on Jesus? Or have you rejected Him as the cornerstone of your life? You know, you have to remember, brothers and sisters, that we cannot build our lives on something that's changing and shakeable. Nakita natin yun. In the past two years of the pandemic, everything that we know and how we have lived our life have drastically changed. Diba? Kung dati, we can travel, go anywhere. Ngayon, ang daming restrictions. Tapos, kung dati, we could gather as many people as we could in one place ngayon. Grabe, may mga, um, ang tawag doon, minimum seating capacity na. Kahit nga kapag ka kumain ka sa restaurant, kung minsan isang buong pamilya kayo, isang bahay lang kayo, kaso lang magkakahiwalay pa kayo ng table, ba? Diba? Ang daming nagbago. Alam natin yun. Even yung mga kuminsan, yung business natin that has been thriving for so long, for many years, and yet pandemic came and everything changed. Even how we celebrate Christmas, it has changed. Even, grabe lahat, kahit pagpunta ka ng hospital, di ba, ang hirap ngayon magpunta ng hospital, magpa-doktor, everything has changed. And in this world, grabe, paano nga ba tayo makaka-survive? Hindi pa natin alam kailan matatapos yung pandemic. Tapos yung Omicron, meron siya mga sub point, point, point. Yan, nanonood ako ng news. Merong iba-ibang sub-variants na naman yung Omicron. You know, um, sino sa inyo familiar sa Jenga game? So, I'm showing you a picture of that. You know, ang goal nito is to uh, build as high as you could to try to put all of the uh, wooden blocks on top of each other with the goal na hindi ito magko-collapse. But for every one of you who have tried to play this game, you know that no matter how high you go in this Jenga game, kahit ba 10 hours na kayong naglalaro, grabe, ano kayo itsura kung 10 hours na Jenga game, sobrang taas na siguro nun. No matter how careful you are, these wooden blocks are bound to come crashing down. Why? Because its foundation is faulty and weak. And no matter how hard we try, without Jesus as our chief cornerstone, as our strong foundation, our life will fall apart. You have to understand that Jesus is the only stable and sure foundation that we can build 
our lives on. All other foundations are like sinking sand. The more you struggle, grabe, mas lalo kang magsisink. If you do not have Jesus as your cornerstone, uh, this is a quote by Dr. T.L. Lowery. So it says here, if we do not have Jesus as our cornerstone, holding us together, strengthening us, and keeping us in alignment with its purpose, then nothing we build will be of value. Grabe no? Sapul na sapul yung sabi niya. Pag wala daw si Jesus as the cornerstone, as the reason, diba? as the foundation of us, of our lives, ano sinasabi niya? Kung wala daw si Jesus who would hold us together, pag wala si Jesus who will strengthen us, who will keep us in alignment, diba? sa purpose niya, lahat daw ng ginagawa natin, diba? it's gonna be worthless or nothing. Kahit daw gaano karaming degrees ang natapos mo, kahit daw ikaw ang pinakamayaman sa buong mundo, kahit ikaw yung pinakasikat na tiktokeris ngayong panahon na to, grabe no, kahit ikaw yung pinakamaraming followers sa IG, but apart from Jesus, everything that you, work, you are working on will be of no value. Kaya nga, you know what? When you talk about Jesus being the cornerstone, it also talks about lordship. This is a very, um, anong tawag doon? Basic na pinag-aaralan natin. Pagdating ng one-to-one -one after salvation will come chapter after the Lordship. Kahit sa Purple Book hanggang Victory Weekend, pinag-uusapan natin yun. Because it's one thing to accept Jesus as our Savior, as, you know what, um, tagapagligtas, but it's another thing to accept Him as our Lord. When we say that Jesus is Lord over our lives, it means that He uh, He has access, He has authority over every area of your life. Pag sinabi mo na si Jesus ang chief cornerstone, ang chief foundation ng buhay mo, it means that it's Jesus who calls the shots in your life. So kaya nga, let's do a heart check now. Perhaps the Lord has been prompting you, has been touching your heart in the past, Sabi ni Lord, you have to stop that ungodly relationship, anak. Sabi mo, Lord, mahal ko siya eh. Lord, wala nang umibig sa akin ng katulad niya. Wala na akong mahahanap na katulad niya. Kapag pakakawalan ko siya, Lord, I might diba, be single forever. Hindi ko kayang i-give up. But you know, and you know, really know that this person has already taken the place of God in your heart. In fact, wala ka nang time para kay God eh. Kasi lagi mo siyang kasama. Lagi kayong nag-uusap. ba? Diba? Lumabas na kayo buong araw. Pag uwi mo sa bahay, kausap mo pa rin. Nag-video call pa rin kayo. Hanggang pagtulog, paggising mo, siya na naman. Every waking moment is consumed by this person. The question is, are your relationships life-giving and God-honoring? How you relate with your spouse? How you relate with your friends? How you, you relate with your siblings? With your parents? with your friends. Kung minsan sabi ni, sinasabi sa'yo ni God, stop that sin. Stop that lying, that cheating, yung cursing, yung addiction. Iwan mo na yan. Diba? Sinasabi sa'yo ni God, anak, yung business mo, itama mo. Wag, do not give in to compromises. Do it the right way. Do it, alam mo, kahit gumasos ka na malaki. Diba? Sa taxes mo, ganyan. Pay your taxes right. Diba? Kung minsan, nung una naman talaga, sobrang in-order mo si God. Unfortunately, along the way, perhaps, you started to compromise because there were certain temptations that you faced and you started to give in. Well, you, you have to realize it, that whether you like it or not, Jesus is Lord over your life. And this implies in all areas. So will you choose to reject Jesus and just build your life according to what you want and how you want? Or will you choose Jesus to be your cornerstone? Let your life be founded on Jesus so that your life will be stable and sure. Now, for some of you, siguro kilala mo na si Jesus. Ilang years ka na nag ng victory. In fact, you're already a victory group leader. You're already discipling siguro a person or... Uh, Two years ka na nag kasama namin sa online worship service. Diba? But you know, 
even though we've been that long in our walk with the Lord, it does not make us immune to challenges, um, to testings and trials, to difficulties. But having Christ as our cornerstone will make us stable and sure. Having Jesus as our cornerstone will make us grounded and rooted in Him. I'm showing you a picture of a kawayan or a bamboo. Ayan. Alam mo, ah, kami, meron kaming bamboo sa bahay kung nakapunta na kayo. I think, how many yun? One, tatlo lang ata. Tatlo lang ba yung bamboo namin dun sa side? And interestingly, every time na malakas ang ulan at saka hangin, magug, kasi usually yung bamboo, it, um, it's, it stands erect. Ganun, nakatayo siya diretso. Pero pag umulan na, na humangin na napakalakas, makikita mo talaga magbe-bend na parang ano na nangyari? Parang ang gulo-gulo. But you know, The secret of the bamboo is this. The bamboo bends with the wind. It does not break. When storms come, when winds come, it does not fight the wind, but it moves with it. So that after a violent storm, the bamboo can still bounce back. It is able to rise up again. Now, you know what? Sa buhay kristyano, the Lord is asking us to be like a bamboo. Rooted deeply in Him in such a way na kahit anong mangyari, kahit gaano kalakas yung pagsubok na darating. ba? Diba? You may be bowed down many times, but you keep getting back up again. Tingnan mo ngayon katabi mo, mukha ba siyang bamboo? ba? Diba? Ayan. So baka iniisip nyo parang si ano yun ha? Sino na nga kasi yung singer ng ano? Ayun, si bamboo. Si bamboo nga. <laughs> Anyway, but um, sabi sa Proverbs 24 verse 16 in the NIV version, For though the righteous fall seven times, they rise again, but the wicked stumble when kam- calamity strikes. Rather. Alam mo, sobrang gustong gusto ko to. Sabi niya, kahit ilang beses daw tayo na uh, matumba, tayo ay babangon muli. Naniniwala ka ba doon? Kahit ilang beses ka mag-stumble and fall, by the grace of God, you're able to stand back right up again and start serving the Lord again. Sabi niya, the wicked will stumble when calamity strikes. When you are firmly rooted with and built on God, you will no longer be shaken with the things of this world because you know that the creator of heaven and earth is for you, is with you, as it, and is in you. Alam ko yung iba sa inyo, with everything that has been happening in your life, it feels like you are in a quicksand. You feel like you are sinking. It's like you're trying so hard to come up for air. Alam mo yung kuminsan, konti na lang, konti na lang, magbe-breakdown ka na. Whether traumatic situations occurred or circumstances diba, that are way beyond your control, No matter what leaves you shaken, an unexpected phone call, the loss of a loved one, the rejection of others, a life transition, a season shift, physical, emotional, mental, financial challenges. You know what? Whatever situation you are in now, Christ, in the Bible, sabi niya, Christ is described as a stable and sure foundation for your times. So let Jesus be your stable and sure foundation. Hindi mo kailangang sarilinin yung problema mo. You don't have to go through it alone. Sabi ni Jesus, come to me all you who are weary and burdened. Diba? And I will give you rest. Pumunta ka kay God. Burned out ka na. Diba? Pagod ng pagod ka na. Well, perhaps you have not done what you should have done in the first place and that is to go back to God. And you know, even when Christ answers us in ways that we have not expected it or things do not turn out the way we expect, we are called by God to still fix our eyes on Him, knowing that His ways and His thoughts are higher than our ways and our thoughts. His purposes will prevail. Remain in faith Trust the Lord. Stay steady. Now, I'm about to end, but I want to share to you the story of uh, one of our uh, Indian doctors now, si Betsy. 
uh, Be- Betsy, I came to know many years ago kasi nag- she studied here in uh, CSU. Nag-start siya with her uh, BS Bio. I think that was two years. Tapos she went on to pursue uh, medicine sa CSU as well. Si Betsy, she, is, uh, she grew up in a Christian home. In fact, her papa is a pastor in India. Now what happened was, you know, uh, life in the Philippines was not easy for her. Pagdating pa lang nila, ang daming challenges na hinarap. Uh, she had to transfer from one boarding house to another. Uh, what else? You know what she failed in her revalida? Ang revalida kasi sa med school would be that one exam that they have to take for them to qualify for graduation. And you know, she had to take it again to be able to graduate when all of her friends uh, went home to India, naiwan siya dito sa Pilipinas. After a long wait, a few months, she was able to graduate. She took her licensure exam in India. Umuwi na siya sa India. December of 2020, she failed. Hindi siya pumasa sa med exam nila. July 2021, she took the board exam again and she passed. That was last year. And you know, uh, yung mga foreign students natin, mga Indian students natin na nag-med dito, Uh, habang nag-uusap kami, I would get regular updates from them. Uh, may mga changes daw kasi sa law, sa laws sa India, especially sa med uh, career nila. You know, kahit nakatapos sila sa Philippines ng medicine, mahirap pa rin mag-practice ng medicine when you go back to India. So grabe, sobrang pahirapan daw mag-apply for internship, for work. They have to wait a long time. They have to pay so much money. Tapos, alam nyo, She tried applying for many months. And finally, in November, last year lang, last November, she got accepted in a college for internship. Sabi niya, itong college na to where she got accepted ay yung um, ano, dream niya ng 2013. Doon daw sana siya magme-med, pero hindi siya natanggap. So, sobrang devastated daw niya in 2013. And now, just last November, she was allowed Uh, to go on internship in this college. Tapos pagdating ng December, alam yun nangyari kay Betsy, si papa niya was hospitalized for infection. Um, yung infection na yun damaged his heart, a valve of his heart in such a way na kailangan niya ng surgery. So what happened was, he had to be on antibiotics for almost 12 days straight. He had to complete four weeks of therapy. Kaso lang, habang nagta-therapy siya, Nagkaroon siya ng COVID si papa niya ng January. The surgery had to be postponed. Tapos, they, ha- they had to wait for him to be cleared from his uh, COVID para ituloy ulit yung um, treatment niya. So the doctors, when they checked on him, nakita nila na okay na siya. Hindi na kailangan na emergency yung um, surgery sa heart niya. So they can um, opt to have it a few months after. So, alam nyo, habang masakit si papa niya, you know what, she, t- she took care of him all the while while, ha- while having her duty. Tapos, just last Tuesday, uh, she messaged me again. Sabi niya na, yun nga, yung formal internship niya in that college, yung pinagpeprayan niya, uh, she had to pay four lakhs. Hindi ko alam kung, kung anong tawag doon, how you pronounce that. She had to pay approximately three million pesos. para matuloy niya yung internship niya. Pero alam mo, a few days after that daw, uh, she received her license as a doctor. And from 3 million pesos, alam mo kung magkano na lang yung babayaran niya? 20,000 pesos. Grabe no? So, bakit ko ba sinashare sa inyo to? I, w- I actually wanted you to realize this journey that she had to take from the time that she studied She dreamed about becoming a doctor, came here in the Philippines, hanggang sa umuwi siya sa India, hindi siya pumasa. ba? Diba? Ang daming setbacks, ang daming nangyari sa buhay niya, ang daming shakings, ang daming challenges that would have left her devastated and wanting to give up. But you know, one sure way that made her strong is she said that she had Jesus. She held on to the promises of the Lord. You know, Jesus strengthened her. His grace was more than enough for her. She continued to trust the Lord. She was shaken many nights, spent crying. 
But thank God that Jesus was her strength and her fortress. In short, Jesus has become her cornerstone. She built her life upon Jesus in such a way that, you know, whatever challenges she faced in life, she trusted the Lord. And we continue to meet pa rin sa aming victory group. Eh, actually, once a month na lang siya. And I'm always refreshed with the updates that I receive with, uh, from them. Isaiah 28 verse 16, anong sabi niya dito? This is what the Lord God says. See, I lay a stone in Zion, a tested stone, a precious cornerstone, a sure foundation. The one who believes will never be shaken. Can you just read that with me? The one who believes will never be shaken. Isaiah 28 has already prophesied it. He talked about Jesus. Sabi niya dito, God will lay a stone in Zion and this stone is a tested stone. Di ba tayo ngayon, pagdating sa gamot, gusto natin sigurado? Di ba? Pagdating sa kandidato na iluluklok natin, gusto natin uh, proven na yung track record, may mga accomplishments. Pero ang sabi sa Bible, si Jesus is a tested stone. Proven and tested, impeccable record of goodness, of faithfulness, of deliverance, of love, of grace. He is a precious cornerstone. Huwag natin siyang baliwalain. He must be our first and utmost priority. And sabi niya, He is a sure foundation. When our lives are anchored on Him, we know that we will never be shaken. And just like Betsy, I hope that you would see your life that way. Having Jesus in your life, you know, will not make you immune. <laughs> diba? It will not prevent you from facing challenges and trials and testings. But, having Jesus as our stable and sure foundation will help us to get back up again. Now, let's pray even as I end. I want to pray for two groups of people. Unang-una is, perhaps, while you were listening kanina, you have realized that you have built your life on every other foundation except Jesus. You built your life on your career perhaps. You built your life on fame, on wealth, on the degrees that you were trying to pursue. You built your life on titles and positions. You built your life on your business. You built your life on someone else. And nakita mo, as you did all of these things, it has left you empty. The challenge for you today is why don't you build right this time? Why don't you build it with Jesus as the cornerstone of your life? You've sensed this. You know, your life has not been going in the right direction. You've been going around in circles. You've been like, yung sabi ko kanina, parang nasa quicksand ka. You're sinking deeper and deeper and deeper and you cannot get out of it. And yet today, the Lord is touching your heart. Anak, tama na. Huwag ka na tumakbo. Tama na. Bumalik ka na sa akin. Anak, tanggapin mo na ako. Receive this gift of salvation that I'm offering you today. Receive this gift of forgiveness, this gift of new life. And if it, if that is you today, I want to take this time to ask you to just close your eyes. Just don't mind yung katabi mo nag ng ngayon sa online service. Just talk to the Lord. I want to invite you today to receive Jesus into your life. So why don't you just pray this with me? Lord Jesus, I acknowledge today my need of a Savior. Lord, I've realized that I have built my life on things and on other people, on what the world has offered me. And yet today, Lord Jesus, I come before you in absolute surrender. I ask, that by your grace, help me, Lord, to start anew, to build right again. Today, I'm making that decision to receive you as my personal Lord, Master, and Savior. Lord Jesus, starting today, I'm living my old life of sin. 
Lord, I want to stop running around in circles. I want to stop doing my own thing. I want to start my life with you. And Lord, I want to thank I thank you God for my brothers and sisters who have received you into their life today even as they have asked you to be the chief cornerstone of their life, to be their Lord, master and savior. I pray God that Lord you would help them Lord God to align themselves Lord God to your purposes. I pray God that in the coming days and months reveal more of yourself Lord God to them. Enable them Lord God to know you more and more. Thank you, God, for this brand new life that you've given them. Claiming your promise, Lord God. Lord, you said in your word, Lord God, that, Lord, in Christ, Lord God, the old has gone and the new has come. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Now, I want to pray for another group of people. Perhaps, si kayo yung number two, yung sinasabi ko panina. Kilala mo na si Jesus, may relationship ka na sa kanya, you've been serving him, you've been, you know what, um, You've known him for a long time perhaps. Pero may mga areas sa buhay mo na kailangan mong isurrender under his lordship. There are areas in your life that you may you have to make him lord over your life kasi nga along the way you've started to compromise. Diba? You've started to give in to temptations to what the world has tried to offer you. Kumbaga, hindi na si Jesus yung at most priority ng buhay mo. And yet today, you know what? You are making that decision to choose Jesus once again. So why don't you just close your eyes and take this time to just speak to the Lord. Speak from the heart. Lord Jesus, I come before you today. Lord, I repent. Lord, forgive me for all of those times that I have tried to do things on my own. For all of those times that I have compromised, that I have given into temptation. Lord, forgive me because I have not been a salt and light into the world where you have placed me. Forgive me, Lord, because there are people, Lord God, who have depended upon me, Lord, na na disappoint sa akin, na na stumble, Lord, even sa akin. Lord, I pray, God, that starting today, guide me, help me to build right again. Lord Jesus, help me to start anew with you right at the center of it. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. Lord, thank you, God. Even as you've reminded us today, may you be the chief cornerstone of our life. Help us to build upon you, upon your word. I pray, God, that you will give us the grace to endure, the grace to persevere. I pray, God, that you would enable us to overcome whatever trials and testings and challenges that we may face, Lord God. Hindi ko man alam kung anong pinagdadaanan mga kapatid ko ngayon, Lord God. But I know, God, that you are reminding them today that you are with them, Lord, with you as a strong, secure, stable, sure foundation. Lord, you would ensure, Lord God, that they will not, Lord God, collapse, Lord God. They will not, Lord God, um, even fail, Lord God. Thank you, Lord, that you would continue to enable us, Lord God, to abide in your word, even in your presence. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Just see that we will look upon him. This past but many made to die. The beauty that we ever would desire. Tears of sorrow filled the Savior's eyes. But death could not hold you. Creation adores you, and we will bow down.
Thank you, Ms. Janina, for that great word. And uh, some announcements before we take our regular tithes and offerings. First is our Purple Book class. This class is offered to our members who have gone through our Victory Weekend. Nagsimula na po last Sunday yan. Pero ngayon, tuloy pa rin yung online Purple Book class natin. And that is conducted online by a Zoom at 2 in the afternoon. And also... For our Victory Weekend completers, we will have our water baptism this coming March 5 at 9 a.m. The venue for this water baptism will be at Luzon Events at Gosi Norte, Tugigaraw City. And to encourage us for our giving, let's all welcome one of our Victory Group leaders, Sir Mafi Turaray. Blessed Sunday, everyone, for our tithes and offerings. Let me uh, read to you Psalms chapter 84, verses 11 and 12 from the ESV. For the Lord God is a sun and a shield. The Lord bestows favor and honor. No good thing does he withhold from those who walk uprightly. O Lord of hosts, Blessed is the one who trusts in you. Uh, verse 11 talks about God's abundant love. God is a sun and a shield. As a sun, he enlightens. He is the great light, the fountain of life, or the source of which something supplied. As a shield, he protects us. He saves his people from their enemies, and from their dreadful diseases. God's love is constantly directed to us, every believer, powerfully radiating His goodness, leaving no good thing withheld. Although His promises is targeted towards all of us believers, it is not equally applied because there is a condition to the promise. We need to walk uprightly. We need to walk close to God and allow Him to shape our life. We need to obey and honor Him. Church, giving our tithes and offering is a way of honoring Him and abiding to His words. And as, and as we continue to do so, expect God's blessing in all areas of your life. Why don't we pray? Heavenly Father, once again, we say thank you for your word. Thank you for uh, reminding us of your abundant love. That you are the source of life, the source of everything that we have. Lord, as we continue to walk with you, to abide to your word, and to put our trust in you, you will not withhold good things from us, but you will continue to pour out your blessings in us in every way. Lord, we thank you because you are always delighted in blessing us. We give you back all the glory and all the honor and all the praises in the mighty of Jesus. Amen. There are three ways for you to give your tithes and offerings. First is by dropping your tithes and offerings from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. at Lighthouse Luna Street, second floor of the home and office furniture, and at Victory Building by the road, second floor. Second, you can give through direct deposit or bank transfer to Land Bank Gagarao, 
and UCPB. Details are flashed on the screen. And third, you can also give through GCAS. Just scan the code posted and send a screenshot of your transaction done through private message to Victory to Gagarao. The giving of the tithes and offerings are for Victory members only. If you are a guest, you are not obliged to give. But if you wish to do so, we pray that God will bless you. Thank you for your generosity. I hope you are encouraged with the word of God today that Jesus is our cornerstone. We will remain strong, stable, and secure because we will put our hope, our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And may I declare to you now the blessing of the Lord found in Numbers chapter 6, verses 24 to 26. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make His face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn His face toward you and give you peace. God bless you. Have a fruitful week ahead. My name is Teacher Annika, and today we'll be joined by a very special guest from the <laughs> team, Legendary Lion, Teacher Pao! <laughs> Hi everyone! My name is Teacher Pao, and I'm excited to join you today as the representative of the Legendary Lions! Wow! Uh, Teacher Pao, where is Teacher Jason? Hmm. <laughs> well, he's actually studying Leadership 215. Oh, okay. So what is Leadership 215? Well, Teacher Annika, and also you watching us today, Leadership 215 is actually a training program to establish leaders with strong biblical and theological foundations as ministers of the gospel. That's awesome. Well, good for him. Good for Teacher Jason. Yeah, but don't worry. He'll be back. He will be back, don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> okay, everyone, because it's Teacher Pao's first time on Kids Church, let's start off with the fairly easy games. <laughs> <laughs> yes, please. I love it. So what do we have prepared, Teacher Annika? Okay, the game is easy. We will just have to identify the five things that are wrong in the photo mm -hmm. flashed on the screen. We also have the photo on our phones, okay. so we can zoom in. All right, and whoever finds the most mistakes in 60 seconds wins. But for that, let me give a shout out to Aki Orozco and Regine or Regine Kadayong, FC Ibanez, Daphne and Isaiah Aniwan, and Amelia Borja. Hi! Hello! <laughs> now, are you ready, kids? Make sure to play along! All right, let's go! I can zoom in, right? Yes, we can zoom in. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. <laughs> it's kind of hard. <laughs> oh, what? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, are we gonna exchange papers? Yes, you can. <laughs> oh my gosh, so okay. <laughs> Alright, one. <laughs> See, doors and windows. Yeah, interchange. Man on a surfboard. Surfboard. Yeah, that's Teacher Pao's answer. Teacher Pao's answer is doors and windows. And man on a surfboard. 
Yeah. Well, Teacher Annika's answers are someone surfing on the street, the same as my answer. Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> and then submarine. I'm not sure if this is a submarine or... A submarine. I think that's a submarine. <laughs> it's like... Uh, there's a term for that letter Z, such so as the letter Z. Zip line. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure. Maybe we need some help from someone who yeah. knows the answer. <laughs> wow, that was harder than it looks. Kids, were you able to find out all the mistakes? Well, I didn't, but congratulations, Teacher Annika. So you know what, Teacher Annika, let's flash the photo with all the mistakes. So as you can see, if you also look closely, the mistakes from this photo that we just played are these. Um, wrong reflection of the boy, and then an upside down building, a dog having a shark tail, <laughs> and then a floating submarine, and lastly is a man trying to surf on the street. <laughs> the most things that were wrong in the picture. Yeah, and you know kids, when we observe something wrong in the people that we love, it is actually important that we also have to speak up and tell them. That is what we will learn in our lesson today. But for now, let's prepare our hearts and minds as we worship the Lord. Fill us with the goodness of your presence. Once empty, now we're found in your embrace. Oh Lord, your heart for us never changes. It beats the same. You lift us up and free us from our burdens. Your love, it binds up every broken heart. Now hope will rise in all that you created Cause you are here, the God of all Lord, have your way Come take your place, let all the earth be saved Your kingdom reigns, now every heart will sing your praise will be your hands and feet by your grace, the world will know your name. Jesus, you reign, so every heart will sing your praise. You drive away your fears and give us courage. Empowered by your spirit, by your strength. Proclaim to us. Father, thank you so much for knowing what we need even before we ask them. And thank you for giving us the faith to ask for big things. But also, I pray for a heart that's content and thankful for everything that we have because they, they are from you and you give them because you love us. And I pray, God, that as a way of thanking you with everything that you have given us, that we would worship you and love you in Jesus' name we pray, amen. 
Another way we can worship God is through our giving. So you may give your tithes and offering by following the instructions flashed on the screen. Hello, my chiquititas and chiquititos! I'm so excited today because we have a sequel to the last week's letter. Letters have sequels? Well, here it is. Let's go. Dear Coach Carlito, remember me, Ang? I remember you. I wrote about my sister who I'm trying to get along with. I'm not so angry anymore because of the love of Jesus. Yeah! But my sister, still does the things that drive me crazy. All cap. Like taking my stuff without asking, not playing games by the rules, and being things like that. I feel like I should tell her to stop being selfish and start being like Jesus. But I am so scared. Scared she might get mad at me. What do I do? Signed, Anne Lovey Relly. Whoa, you don't give the easy ones, eh, Anne? That's why we have Kids Church Kids who can help you and Coach Carlito. What do you think, Casey Case? Yes, with my mom and dad. Yeah. Yeah. My family. I know that they're my love because I, I love mommy and daddy. So you answer with her. I know it because I feel it from the heart because they're hugging and kissing me. Always focus on their happiness and when they are feeling sad, you should always comfort them. Helping them if they're in need. Hugging and kissing them. By obeying others. Nice people helping me. When people um, are nice to me. I feel More comfortable. Hug and their kisses and all of their serving for me. When I'm sad, they always comfort me. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Well, that is really not good and I always have to apologize. Um, lesser your people would love you. They might get mad at you. I mean, mostly. Yeah. Yes. Sad and, and crying. Sad also. It really made me feel really bad. Yes. My mom said to not go out. And then I went out. I grabbed my bag. I grabbed my helmet. But mom caught me. Yes. Like, like I disturb other people when they're like, when they're like focusing or something or sleeping. Mm -hmm. Disobeying. Yeah. But I did tell my Yes, it's better to tell someone. Yeah. Don't tell them to I will tell it to mommy and daddy. I love them and I don't want them to suffer at the end. I don't want them to suffer in the consequences. No. Yeah. The Holy Spirit. Yeah, the Holy Spirit will help you. I know this verse that will, that will help everyone that will fight. But the one who is patient comes to court. Yeah, because when they're fighting, I must tell them to be patient. I will just, I will just go over there and say, um, guys, what you're doing is bad. You should not do it. Oh, my inquisitive investigadores, I salute you. Not everyone loves the truth. But Paul wrote in 1 Corinthians 13, verse 6, Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices in the truth. We do not need to be angry when we tell someone the truth, saying, you did this, you did that, but you're so bad. You are a goat in here. But say that we love them and we want to stand with them to fight evil in all our lives. And it is the same for us. We need to accept the truth when the ones doing, we're the ones doing wrong. And say, sorry! It's so hard to say sorry. And ask for forgiveness. Not easy, no. But Jesus himself said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. So the truth of Jesus in our hearts will help us follow his truth. 
for to God. Love is not covering up mistakes, but loving the truth of Jesus Christ. Until next time! Hi kids, I'm Pastor Bodhi, and today we are continuing our series entitled Love Nuts. In this series, we are learning more about what love is by talking about what it's not. Make sense? Before we go to the word, let's play a game. I'm calling this game Love or Not. I'll give you a series of situations, then you will assess whether the response shows love or not. If it shows love, type love, L-O-V-E, on the chat box. If it doesn't show love, type not, N-O-T, on the chat box. Let's play love or not. Are you ready? Situation number one. You heard your friend say a curse word. You decide to ignore it and keep quiet just so you wouldn't get into an argument. Is that showing love or not? Type love or not in the chat box. Second situation. Your classmates started a chat group where they say bad stuff about your teacher during your online class. You decide not to say anything against it because you're outnumbered and you don't want the group to think that you're uncool. Is that love or not? Type it on the chat box. Situation number three. You saw your cousin bullying someone until the other kid cried. You just pretended not to see it because you don't want to disagree with your cousin. After all, we should mind our own business, right? Is that love or not? Love or not on the chat box. If you chose to keep quiet in the three situations, let me tell you, that is not showing love. It shows support, but support for the wrong thing, which is not love. A lot of people seem to think that love means we should always get along with the other person. That's why we should do everything to avoid confrontations and disagreements. But what would happen if we see our friends, our family members deliberately doing wrong and going against what God says? Do we speak up or do we shut up? Love stands up for the truth. Love is not covering up mistakes. In 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 6, it says, Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. As his children, we are called to honor God. Remember, kids, walking in truth honors God. We always need to stand up for the truth, what God's Word says, in our lives and in the lives of those around us, especially the ones we love. We are called to help each other honor God. So when we love someone, yes, we do everything to get along with that person, but not to the point of disobeying God's Word. Do you know that keeping quiet while we witness wrongdoing means that we're agreeing with it? We're saying, it's okay. When we love someone, we are called to do everything in our power to help them become better people by reminding them to honor God in everything that they do. How do we do that? By lovingly pointing them back to God's word. I know that can be awkward and uncomfortable and scary. You might be thinking, what if my cousin gets mad at me? What if my classmates think I'm uncool and corny? What if my friend says he doesn't want to hang out with me anymore? Love doesn't mean we will always support our friends and loved ones just to make them happy, even if they're already sinning. They might not understand our reminders and our corrections in the moment. Some might get mad, some might get offended, but in time, with God's help, they will realize that we did it out of love and they will eventually be grateful for it. Kids, let me ask you, are you a disciple of Jesus? As his disciples, we are called to follow him, but it doesn't end there. We are also called to help others follow him. I pray that we would always remember that in everything that we do, especially when we see our loved ones doing wrong. Let's point them back to the right path, the path that honors God. And kids, when you look for friends, choose people who are not afraid to confront you when needed and who would bravely point you back to God's word because that's what true love is. Do you have friends like that? I hope you do. I tell you, they are the people who truly love you. Love is not covering up mistakes. Love is standing up for the truth of God's word.
Our power truth for today, let's say it together. We'll learn and practice free love that is taught in God's Word. And our power verse comes from John 4.16, which says, God is love, and all who live in love live in God, and God lives in them. Jesus says in John 14, 6, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. When we talk about the truth, it's not just a concept. The truth is a person, the person of Jesus. Jesus says that he is the truth. Therefore, when we stand up for the truth, we stand up for Jesus and he is glorified. We do this so that more people would know him and would receive his salvation. Let me pray for you, kids. Lord, we thank you for your word that is the truth. And thank you that you will continue to help us know your word, not just for ourselves, but also for other people. I pray for every kid watching this video, when we see our loved ones doing wrong, give us the boldness and give us the right heart to lovingly correct them all for your glory. We praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hi, kids! Why are you laughing? I have something stuck in my teeth. Wait, wait. I do! That is my dessert for lunch. Thank you so much for pointing that out. You saved me from being embarrassed the whole day. You know this thing stuck in my teeth? It's very much like sin. It's unpleasant, it's not right, and it doesn't look good. Aside from that, sin can hurt yourself and the people around you. That's why it's important to always tell people the truth, even when it's a bit hard. Do it with gentleness, kindness, and of course, with love. For our family con, what will you do if you see a loved one doing something that is not pleasing to God? That's all for today. See you next week. Bye!
Mm. Welcome to Craft Time with Teacher Plum. That's me. First, I want to give a shout out to Lucas and Tony who worship with us every Sunday. Also to Joaquin and Johan Morilia, Tavi De Leon, Kyla Rale Forca, and also happy 7th birthday to Ezekiel John Evangelista and hi to his brother Elijah. Now, it's time to announce our raffle winners for the month of January. Congratulations to the following kids. Congratulations to Faith Calixto, Shel Kawili, and Faith and Hope De Los Santos. Our staff will be reaching out to you via email. Today, we will be making this cool paper rocket that actually launches into the sky. Watch this. Oh, did you see that? It's so cool, right? So, we're making rockets today to remind us that when we value the truth and tell people when they're doing something wrong, we are launching them in the right direction closer to God. Now, let's make this craft. To make the rocket craft, we will need three pieces of paper cups, a pair of scissors, a Q-tip or cotton bud, two pieces of rubber bands, some masking tape, a pokey tool, so I'm using a skewer over here, and a sign pen. We'll also need colored paper. So for my rocket, I'm going to be using yellow, orange, and black. The first step is for the parents or the guardians because this is a bit tricky to do. So take two paper cups and stack them together. And I'm going to be using my sign pen over here to poke holes on the four sides of the cup. So make sure it goes through both paper cups. And I'm going to use my skewer to make the holes a bit bigger. So that's the first hole. The second hole will be right across. I'm going to do the same thing. Using the skewer. And the third hole will be here on this side. And the fourth will be opposite that. So the holes on your paper cup should look like this. Next, let's take our rubber bands and thread them across both holes like this. You can use the skewer to help you thread the rubber bands through. And to stop this from going all the way through, I'm gonna take just this part of a cotton bud that I cut off. So it's a tiny stick, it's a short stick. And I'm just gonna secure that like this. Now I can thread this across the other end. Now you can either tie this in a knot if your rubber band is long enough or if it's just the right size, then you can just do what you did on the other side and place another piece of cotton buds across the loophole. So I'm gonna leave it like this. So this is what it should look like once you're done assembling the first rubber band. And I'm gonna do the exact same thing, but for these two holes. So your paper cup should look like this so far. As you can see, I put pieces of Q-tips over here too, so I can cut the excess. And to secure it even further, I'm just gonna wrap this in masking tape. Now let's start decorating our rocket. So this will be the base of the rocket, and I'm just gonna cover this in yellow paper. And now that I'm done covering these cups with some yellow paper, I'm gonna take my black construction paper and I'm gonna cut a window over here. So for the window, I'm just gonna 
cut a circular window like those that we see in rockets. Using some double-sided tape, I'm now going to stick that on my rocket. Just right over here. Next, I'm going to take my orange paper and I'm going to put some fins on the sides of my rocket. So your fins can be any shape, but I'm going to make mine just like the fins that we see on sharks. As you can see, I folded this paper so that when I'm going to cut this, it comes out two pieces already. Now that I have my fins already cut, I'm just going to slightly fold each edge just very, very thinly like this and apply some glue so I can secure it to the side of my rocket. Good for the other side. And last but not the least, I'm going to make the cone or the tower of my rocket. So I'm just going to use some orange paper again and I'm just going to draw a semicircle. It doesn't have to be perfect, really. Cut it until here. And let's make our cone. You can cut the excess. So I'm gonna cut this excess paper and shape it according to your liking. And I'm gonna be using some double-sided tape to secure this in place. And if the cone that you made is too big, I just cut off excess in the bottom. And now I think I'm gonna cut off more. And now I am happy. So using some glue, I'm just gonna glue this on the top of my rocket. And now we're done. And ta-da! We're done with our craft. And do you want to see it launch again? Whoa! That was high! So again, we made paper rockets today to remind us that every time we uphold the truth in people when they do wrong, we are sending them off and launching them in the right direction closer to God. This is because there is a person who is the truth. Did you know that? That the truth is actually a person? Who is it? That's correct! His name is Jesus. And that's it for our craft time for today. Have fun with your rockets! I can't wait to see your versions of this craft. Remember to send them to our email address, kidsfort at victory.org.ph. The email address flashed on the screen. Please send them by Monday, 5 p.m. And each photo will be one raffle entry for our raffle giveaway for this month of February. That's it! See you next week, kids! Bye! Thank <laughs> you.